what's up youtube welcome back to the channel today i've got a really exciting video for you guys today i'm going to be looking at 40 year old lenses and what is the biggest difference between a 40 year old lens and a lens that's made today are all lenses the same did the older lenses really capture this essence to them of back in the day what is the difference nowadays and for people who don't know anything about cameras i know you guys are probably thinking it's just glass it's just a lens i mean what is the difference and i promise you after filming this video there is a huge difference between these old lenses versus an industry standard lens that you would see and use today but before this video actually begins i want you guys to go down in the comment section below and let me know if you are a photographer or a videographer i want to see who's out there watching these videos if it's more photographers or if it's more videographers so go down there in the comment section let me know and while you're scrolling down there if you want to show your boy some love put some food on my plate hit that like and subscribe button it'll be much appreciated so we're going to be reviewing three of the Hasselblad lenses we got the 50 millimeter f4 we got the 80 millimeter at 2.8 and we got the 150 at f4 that's a lot of numbers that's a mouthful these lenses came out in circa actually i gotta look this up actually hold on hold on hold tight so these lenses came out circa 1980 to 1989 so about 40 years ago today actually almost 50 years it's about 45 roughly right take 80 minus 20 yeah almost 50. so from a lot of reviews i've read on these lenses a lot of people say they are tack sharp they are super contrasty they have great color to them and so on and so forth and i'm not gonna lie what i've found is something completely different but that could be because these are 80 years old and the difference in contrast from back then is a little different. A lot of things were filmed back then and, and so on and so forth. So there's a, there's a big discrepancy there. But without further ado, let's step outside and let's go test out these lenses. I forgot something important. Got it. Forgot something again. Two or three trips later, I think we're good. Forgot my water, forgot ND filters, I forgot everything. I just wanna throw it out there that it's the beginning of March in Syracuse and it's 67 degrees today. So you bet your petunias I'm going out to film. And for those of you who are like, what's the big deal? To put that in perspective, this is like Alaska getting one day that is, you know, 70 degrees. Like it's, am I wrong? I, I might be wrong. So when it comes to old vintage lenses, there is a big problem with mold amongst the other issues of course there is scratches the aging all those sorts of aspects luckily for us the lenses that we will be using today are in pristine condition so like i said it is like 67 degrees in syracuse so everybody and their mother is out walking today everybody's at you know the erie canal and state parks so it would be impossible for me to find parking there trust me i i, I tried to go to like seven places before this one it was more like two places but so that brings us to this bridge here we have a river we have some scenic areas we don't really have much to work with and, and that's because we're in new york in the beginning of march everything's ugly everything's dead but i think it will do just fine to see how these lenses compare you gotta stop looking at the screen you gotta start looking here when i watch lens reviews I think the biggest pet peeve I have is when they don't review the lens comparing, you know, let's say a normal lens. And I think a lot of the time, especially when I look up these lens reviews of all these different lenses, I want to know how different it is from, you know, let's say a regular lens. Especially if you were to buy a lens like this, you're not buying it just for, you know, a lens. You're buying it because it has some sort of special effects. You like the way it looks. It has a certain picture style. So we're going to test it exactly with what is kind of the standard lenses for video or photo someone just pulled in behind me and i haven't really committed to the whole youtube thing yet and i'm still kind of in my head about talking to a camera in public which i shouldn't be i've been doing this for a long time but i am so we're going to be running this test with a canon c70 and for you guys the camera 
face or camera model, doesn't really matter. I think the ultimate deciding factor here is that if we have the same camera body, which is the Canon C70, and we just switch out the lenses, we'll be able to tell what the big difference is. We're gonna be using the industry standard 24 to 70 2A RF lens, and we're gonna be using the EF 70 to 200 at 2.8 as well. Those are both pretty standard lenses, and they cover pretty much all the focal ranges that we'll be using today, and I'll be shooting everything exactly at the same focal range, exactly at the same speed, exactly everything. The only thing that would be different is going to be the lens. Could really use some help here. So with the 2470, pretty standard stuff. I mean, I wasn't really expecting anything crazy or different, but it's, you know, pretty standard. That's what I'm used to. So now we have the Hasselblad lens on, and like I said before, I'm gonna try to keeping everything consistent. So I'm just using the regular Canon EF to RF adapter with the Hasselblad to EF adapter with the Hasselblad lens. So there isn't another piece of glass in front of anything. It's literally just lens to sensor. The only thing that is in the mix of things is the ND filter, but all NDs are gonna be the same. You know, it's all the same, everything, whatever. So an interesting result we see with the 50 millimeter, it's not as contrasty as I was expecting, especially if you pair it with the RF 24 to 70 at 2.8, you compare those two, I mean, I was expecting the same contrast. These lenses are supposed to be super contrasty and they're not. Zooming into these still frames, you can just tell all day, all night that it is just the biggest difference. It seems like there is a ton more information in the shadows in the old lenses than there is in the new one. You also see that the colors are a little bit different. The vintage lens kind of gives this Kodak vibe to them. You know, the greens are a little bit more tealish and the, the warmth of the plants and the bark and all these things are a little more defined. I think the biggest difference I've found with the 50 millimeter so far is that it is such a different image depending on where you are shooting and the lighting conditions of your shot. You'll find this shot right here, there's a huge difference between these two when it is shot in a darker environment, kind of in shadows. The shadows seem to be very blue. It has a purple bluish tint to them, which is strange to me. Like I said, I'm not I'm not an expert on vintage lenses. I don't really know what I'm talking about that much, but I could just tell there's a difference. So as far as the 50 mil goes, that concludes that test. It's time to bring out the other lenses, the more zoom, and see what we find. And when you compare these two shots together, I think the biggest difference is that there is so much less color in his face with the vintage lens. You also find that the shadows have that bluish hue to them that blue tint you also find that the greens are a little bit deeper in the newer lenses and the colors are deeper in general but that could also be because there's just this hue over the entire picture of the vintage lens it really does have this vintage feel to it it really does have that style to it which i love so the 150 at f4 it seems like a pretty similar image to the 50 millimeter there isn't that big of a difference i will say the 150 is a lot sharper at f4 than the 50 millimeter is, but that just could be the way that we are shooting. Granted that we did use an RF lens for the first one for the 50 millimeter. Now the 150, we are using an EF lens. So maybe there's a difference there, maybe not, but I think it's pretty industry standard either way. It's a 70 to 200. It's an EF, RF, doesn't really matter. So now we're gonna switch up to the bread and butter, the 80 millimeter at 2.8. This one should have a pretty good difference. So when we toss on the 80 millimeter, we find a huge difference. You'll find it has beautiful bokeh in the background, but at the same time, it has a sharpness to it that is so interesting. I mean, you get these little beautiful balls of light that are so defined. You see that there is a beautiful roll off with color in the bokeh. It is a beautiful shot overall. It gives really good vintage vibes. So let's bring it in a little bit closer to his face. We have a little bit less of that bluish tint, but that just could be because we're a little bit closer to his face and there's not a lot to work with. And we will also find that it is the same thing as before. The background blur is more defined, it's beautiful. With the newer lenses, it seems like when you blur out the background, it's just blurred. Everything kind of blends together. With this lens, it seems like there is definition between everything and I love that. 
So I think the biggest difference we have found with all these lenses compared is that the vintage lenses have that hue and tint to them and that they have this sort of color depth that is unique. I think sharpness wise, the vintage and the new lens are pretty similar. With a vintage lens, you don't really get that, that dreamy look. I mean, it's there a little bit, but it's not as apparent. Another thing with the vintage lenses is that they are way less contrasty than today's lenses. That's for sure. So that leaves us with one question. Are these lenses good enough for your camera bag? I guess it's dependent on what you plan to do. If you like the style and vibe of what these lenses are delivering, definitely add these to your arsenal and have fun with it. But if you're still kind of in the air about it and you think, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. You know, I'll just probably keep them in my camera bag for about a year and never pull them out. And it's just great to say that I have them. Then in that case, probably don't get them. For me personally, I would probably only use these cameras when I want to deliver this look, you know, an indie film or a commercial that is branded to more vintage vibes. It, it, these lenses are not going to ever replace the newer lenses that we all cherish and love nowadays, but I think these deliver a certain beautiful look to them that we can all appreciate. So with all that being said, support your boy. You guys know what to do. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Leave a comment down below if you guys want me to make anything in particular, and I'll be sure to do it. So with all that being said, see you guys in the next one. Peace.